Hello everyone. Now part one of consolidation of financial statements of holding and subsidiary is done. That is consolidated balance sheet. Now we take up with second part of this chapter. And what we are going to cover in this second part of the chapter is consolidated profit and loss statement of holding and subsidiary company. Very first of all, consolidated balance sheet is something which was not so difficult because balance sheet format you already remember. <clears throat> we have been making the balance sheet of a joint stock company in amalgamation also internal reconstruction also. Now the trouble with this semester people particularly 2021 is that in the last year, second year BCom, second semester, you did not have the final exams. You have been promoted. So profit and loss statements format, do you remember very well or not is a big question. Though you had done that format in profit prior to incorporation chapter also in semester three, but semester four final exams have not been held. So the final accounts has not been practiced very well from your side. So I want that all of you first note down this format of profit and loss statement properly. Okay. All of you take out your notebooks and give this heading second part of the chapter consolidated profit and loss statement of holding company H limited and its subsidiary S limited for the year ended. Now, this is the format of profit and loss statement what we already studied in second year BCom. So up till here, all of you note down the format completely first. Pause the video and note down this format. And then I'll share with you the trick which I used to give to my students in second year BCom and I've given it to my students in second year BCom also to remember this format. But take your time, pause the video and note down up till profit after tax. Thereafter, I'll share the trick with you to remember this format also. Okay, so pause the video and write down this format first. Yes, I hope all of you must have noted down the format. Now, what is the trick to remember this format which I have given to my students in second year also? We attended. There are only two incomes in this format. Revenue from operations. Revenue from operations will include sales or if gross profit is directly given in the question, it will include gross profit. Okay. Either it will include sales or if gross profit is directly given in the question, it will include gro gross profit which we will be making in note number one. Like we make notes to the balance sheet, same way we make notes to PL statement also. And then all the other incomes will come in the category of other income. So once again, only two incomes are to be included in the format. One is revenue from operations, which will include sales if sales is given in the question or gross profit if sales is not given in the question and other incomes. Once again, only two incomes to be included in the statement revenue from operations and other incomes. We'll get the total income, which will be this one plus two. Now expenses are so many, which you have to mainly remember. For that, I had given the shortcut in the last year, C, D, E, F, D. Okay, how will you remember the expenses, all of you? C, D, E, F, D. C stands for cost of materials consumed and change in inventories. D stands for direct purchases of stock and trade. E stands for employees benefit expenses. F stands for finance cost. D stands for depreciation and amortization. Do in this do D. D stands for depreciation and amortization. O stands for other expenses. Okay. So once again, what is the format you will remember for expenses? C D E F do. C cost of materials consumed and change in inventories. D direct purchases of stock in trade. E employees benefit expenses f finance cost and in that do the depreciation and amortization and o other expenses now what are all these things cost of material consumed means cost of raw material consumed and how do you find the cost of raw material consumed opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock okay opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock this is how you find the cost of raw material consumed Direct purchases of stock in trade means here they are directly talking about the purchases of finished goods. 
direct purchases of stock and trade means here they are talking about the purchases of finished goods so if you are not a manufacturing unit but a trading unit you don't buy the raw material but you directly buy the finished goods then in that case you will not have cost of materials consumed you will have direct purchases of stock and trade that is finished goods change in inventories means difference between opening stock and closing stock okay change in inventories means difference between opening stock and closing stock now here for change in inventories you will remember that if opening stock is more than the closing stock then you record it as a positive amount this amount would be positive okay and if closing stock is more than the opening stock then you record it as a negative amount okay then this would come in bracket so if opening stock is more than closing stock in this difference change in inventories then you record this amount as positive amount and if closing stock is more than the opening stock then you record this amount as negative amount so this all of you note down in the notebooks if opening stock is more than closing stock in change in inventories then this, this would be a negative amount if closing stock is more than opening stock in change in inventories this would be a negative amount okay opening more than positive closing more than negative uh, further what does this change in inventories represent if you don't have raw materials but you directly buy finished goods then this change in inventories will represent opening stock minus closing stock of finished goods also if you even buy the raw materials then in a manufacturing unit you can have work in progress also so in change in inventories we can record opening minus closing stock of work in progress also because raw materials come in cost of material consumed itself but work in progress and finished goods change in inventories are to be recorded over here okay this is for work in progress and finished goods we find the change in inventories for these two things okay for work in progress and for finished goods we find opening stocks and closing stocks difference which is called change in inventories then employees benefit expenses will include salaries wages contribution to pf etc okay salaries wages contribution to pf etc finance costs will include interest expense interest on loan interest on debentures etc depreciation and amortization amortization will include return off items and depreciation means depreciation and other expenses we will further classify into administrative expenses selling expenses and miscellaneous expenses okay so all the administrative expenses like insurance premium audit fees printing and stationery telephone expenses electricity bill they all will come in other expenses within administrative advertisement carriage outward will come in selling expense discount allowed will come in selling expense and other items like sundry expenses and whichever cannot come in administration and selling those items will all come in miscellaneous expenses general expenses they all will come in miscellaneous expenses so total expenses so only thing in this pnl statement to be remembered are expenses others are all very simple only two incomes in the beginning revenue from operations and other incomes and then expenses c d e f do c cost of material consumed and change in inventories d direct purchases e employees benefit expenses f finance cost then do d depreciation and amortization and o other expenses once we get total expenses then profit before tax will be this third item total income minus fourth item total expenses okay from that you'll subtract provision for tax and what you'll get is profits after tax that will be fifth item minus sixth so this is the normal format of profit and loss statement what we already studied in second year bcom i hope everyone would have noted it down now what new we study in this chapter over here is in consolidation of profit and loss statement of holding and subsidiary company after you make this pnl statement in the, then in the same statement you'll continue to find what is the balance to be transferred to consolidated balance sheet okay what is the balance to be transferred to consolidated balance sheet this is what we have to further understand over here what balance is to be transferred to consolidated balance sheet understand how will you find it out you must be writing this down okay we'll start with opening balance of profit and loss account okay we will start with 
opening balance of profit and loss account. Then after that, <clears throat> you will add current years profit after tax. All of you must be writing it down. Okay, there's a new part. This you did not study in second year BCom. This part what we are studying is exclusively a part of consolidation of PL statement and balance sheet only. Okay. And one more thing you all must remember that consolidation of profit and loss statement has no relation with consolidation of balance sheet. They are two separate things which holding company has to present in the annual reports when it gives to shareholders. But consolidation of PL statement has no relation with consolidation of balance sheet okay so in this amount you will add current years profit after tax now further after current years profit after tax you have to subtract several things first thing what you have to subtract is preference dividend okay preference dividend in that in that preference dividend First, you will record holding company's preference dividend. Okay, that will record in this inner column. Then you will record subsidiary company's preference dividend. Then from that you will subtract. If in case holding company has acquired preference shares also. See, so far we have done all the questions where holding company acquires equity shares only. But if holding company has acquired preference shares also, then you will subtract H limited share in preference dividend of S limited. Okay, you'll subtract H limited share in preference dividend of S limited. So this is to be done only if holding company has acquired preference shares. Also keep this in mind. This is to be done only if holding company has acquired preference shares also. Okay, then we will further subtract equity dividend okay equity dividend same way like we did preference dividend first you will record h limited equity dividend then you will record s limited equity dividend and from that you will minus okay this amount after subtracting you'll get in the outer column which we have to subtract so we'll write it in bracket then from that you will subtract H limited share. Okay, further you will minus H limited share in equity dividend of S limited. Okay, H limited share in equity dividend of S limited. This you will minus over here and after subtracting that you will record the amount in the outer column. And again that also we have to further subtract it so you'll write it in bracket all these amounts we will subtract over here okay so balance to be transferred to consolidated balance sheet first you record opening balance of PL account of holding company as well as subsidiary company okay both the companies total balance we will record over here then we will record current years profit after tax of holding company as well as subsidiary company we are making consolidated statements holding company as well as subsidiary company then from that will minus preference dividend first we'll write h limited's preference dividend then we'll write s limited's preference dividend and within s limited if holding company also has acquired preference shares then you'll minus h limited share in preference dividend of s limited then we'll record equity dividend of h limited s limited and again we'll subtract h limited share in equity dividend of s limited so in outer column everything will represent only those amounts which are payable to outside people not within holding and subsidiary company because that we subtract then we will record minority interest which we will be finding in the workings and then we will record okay that also is to be subtracted and then we will record capital reserve so minority interest is also to be subtracted and then we have to subtract capital reserve that also we will be finding in the workings and then finally after subtracting all these amounts what we will get is is the 
balance to be transferred to consolidated balance sheet okay finally what we will get is the balance to be transferred to consolidated balance sheet this amount will be transferred to consolidated balance sheet so this is the extra part what we have to make after we find the profit after tax okay what part we have to make balance to be transferred to consolidated balance sheet how will you find that opening balance of profit and loss account h limited plus s limited add current year's profit after tax of h limited plus s limited from that you will minus preference and equity dividend and how will you minus preference and equity dividend h limited s limited less h limited share in the preference or equity dividend of s limited then you subtract minority interest and capital reserve and then you get balance to be transferred to consolidated balance sheet now we understand how to make the five set of workings for from profit and loss statements point of view earlier we had studied five workings from consolidated balance sheet point of view now we understand the five set of workings from consolidated profit and loss statement point of view yes so now all of you give the headings in your notebook workings okay what five set of workings will we be making in consolidated profit and loss statement will understand over here okay first working will be same degree of control so i'm not showing it to you again you already know how to make the workings of degree of control okay so first working will be same that is degree of control the only point to be remembered here is okay here you can simply write same as earlier only point you to remember over here is if holding company acquires preference shares also which we will have in one of the questions okay if holding company acquires preference shares also okay they may not be in majority because to become a holding company you just need to acquire equity shareholders in majority so if holding company acquires preference shares also though they may not be in majority then separate degree of control of preference shares must be obtained okay separate degree of control of preference shares must be obtained so equity degree of control we will obtain separately preference uh, degree of control we will obtain separately if holding company has acquired preference shares also second workings we will make for time ratio that also we will make in the same manner as you already have studied earlier okay three dates date in the beginning of the year date of acquisition and date of year ending and then we'll get pre and post time ratio now the workings differ now we don't have to make pnl account general reserve control chart a and control chart b workings we have to make simple two workings to find minority interest and capital reserve which will appear in your second part of profit and loss statement okay so minority interest workings we will do, we will be doing which will appear over here so this amount we will always be getting from working note 3 again okay, minority interest this last part of pnl statement minority interest you'll always obtain from working note 3 so how would you be doing it understand it we will start with opening balance of profit and loss account okay whatever is the opening balance of profit and loss account in that holding company also has its share and minority shareholders also have its share so minority shareholders get their share in profit and loss accounts opening balance further in that we add current years profit after tax so minority shareholders are also the owners of the company whatever profits subsidiary company has earned in the current year in that minority shareholders also have the share from that you minus okay from that you minus preference dividend okay keep one thing in mind same point what we studied in last chapter last part of the chapter all the workings we always make from the balance sheet of subsidiary company okay 
So all these figures you'll take from the balance sheet of, sorry, here you'll take from the PL statement of subsidiary company S Limited. All the figures will be taken from the PL statement of subsidiary company that is S Limited. Okay. Now preference dividend V minus and we also minus equity dividend. Okay, we also minus equity dividend. Now, why do we minus preference and equity dividend? Understand the logic behind that. We minus preference and equity dividend because here are we showing preference dividend already in the outer column separately or not? And what is this amount shown in preference dividend? We have already subtracted H limited share in preference dividend means whatever S limited amount is included here is already minority share only. So you cannot include it in minority interest again and have a duplication. So what is the reason we minus preference dividend and equity dividend? Equity dividend also same reason. What amount we get over here is after subtracting H limited share in equity dividend of S limited. So whatever S limited dividend amount comes in the outer column after subtracting H limited share already is minorities share in that. So if you include that amount in minority interest, again, it will be a duplication of that amount. So that's why when we find minority interest, we minus preference dividend and equity dividend because in this last part of PNL statement, preference dividend and equity dividend is already shown separately. I repeat, when we find minority interest, we, we minus preference dividend and equity dividend because in the third part, second part of PNL statement, preference dividend and equity dividend is already shown separately. Okay. Now, after subtracting these two amount, whatever amount remains in that, you will multiply with minorities share in the ratio of degree of control. Okay. This minorities share you will get from this ratio of degree of control first workings so that minority share you will multiply with and then what amount you will get will be minority interest okay by multiplying this amount with minorities share what you will get is minorities interest so this exclusive working we have to make to find the amount of minority interest which will come in that second part of pnl statement Okay, once again look at it how to find the first two workings of degree of control and time ratio remain same. Only point to be remembered is that if holding company has acquired preference shares also, then the degree of control of preference shares will be obtained separately in working note 1. Now how do you find the minority interest? You first take opening balance of PL account, in that you add current years profit after tax, and then you minus preference and equity dividend because they already appear separately in the outer column in second part of PL statement. Whatever profits remain in that minority share will give us minority interest. Then fourth working we have to make for capital reserve. Okay, fourth workings are to be done for capital reserve. So how do you find capital reserve? Understand it here will make two columns of amount. First again you will start with opening balance of profit and loss account. Which company? S limited subsidiary company okay all the workings are to be made from the profit and loss statement of subsidiary company so opening balance of PL account of S limited now opening balance always represents pre acquisition profit capital profit capital reserve means we are interested in capital profits okay so opening balance of profit and loss statement already represents the amount of capital profit only in that we add current years profit after tax okay in that we add current years profit after tax now this you record in inner column because from that you will subtract preference dividend because capital profit means we are concerned only with the profits available for equity shareholders point of view we are concerned with only the profits which are available from equity shareholders point of view Okay, because we are considering holding companies share in capital profit would be going to capital reserve. So preference dividend V minus 
because we have to consider only the profits which are available for equity shareholders. So preference dividend we will minus and then whatever amount remains in that we will find pre-acquisition portion. So whatever is the pre-acquisition period in the time ratio, okay, whatever is the pre-acquisition period in the time ratio, you will multiply with that. What will you do? You will multiply with that and then what you will get is pre-acquisition profits in the outer column. Once again, I repeat, current year's profit after tax minus preference dividend. Okay, preference dividend by do we subtract because we have to find profits available for equity shareholders. Whatever amount remains, you multiply that, okay, you multiply that with pre-acquisition period in this time ratio, whatever pre-acquisition period we have obtained, that you multiply with, you'll get pre-acquisition profit. Since we are finding capital reserve, we are interested only in pre-acquisition profits. Opening balance is always of past years, so pre-acquisition. In the current years, we find out pre-acquisition profits. The total of that are the capital profits, which you further multiply with holding company's share. Okay, which you further multiply with holding company's share of degree of control. So multiplying these two amounts, what you will get is capital reserve. In case if holding company has acquired preference shares also, then further in that you add H Limited's share in pre-acquisition preference dividend because that will also be transferred to capital reserve. So this is to be done only if holding company has acquired preference shares also. What will you further add in that? Holding companies share in pre-acquisition preference dividend. How do you find that? Whatever is the amount of preference dividend of subsidiary company S Limited. Okay, all the figures of S Limited. You multiply with pre-acquisition period. You get pre-acquisition preference dividend. Further you multiply it with holding companies share. What you get is H Limited's share in pre-acquisition preference dividend. Okay. This is how you'll find H Limited's share in pre-acquisition preference dividend. After adding that, what final amount we will get is capital reserve. Okay, after adding that amount, what we will get is finally capital reserve. This will appear in this PL statement second part. So capital reserve you can write in PL statement will get from working note 4. Okay. Once again, how do you find the amount of capital reserve? Look at it. You'll start with opening balance of PL account that is always pre-acquisition, that is always of past years. Now in current years profit after tax, you take in inner column. First you minus preference dividend because we find the capital profits only from equity shareholders point of view. Whatever amount of profit remain are the profits available for equity shareholders. Further you multiply it with pre-acquisition period so you get pre-acquisition profits of current year. Opening balance are already pre-acquisition plus current years pre-acquisition profits. We get the total capital profits. In that you find holding companies share, you get capital reserve. Actually, this is the amount of capital reserve. But in case if holding company has acquired preference shares also, then in that amount further you add H limited share in pre-acquisition preference dividend. How do you find that? Preference dividend of S limited into pre-acquisition period into H limited share. And then what you get is capital reserve. And the last working, if at all given in the question, would be of unrealized profit. How will you find the amount of unrealized profits? Unrealized profits will be done in the same manner as earlier. Okay. Same workings what we used to do earlier. First, we'll find goods sold by holding to subsidiary or vice versa upstream, downstream sale. Then out of that, how many goods are unsold? then the information of profit and then if it is downstream sale then full amount upstream sale then further you find holding companies share in that. The only point you to remember is for unrealized profit we will have only single effect now. Earlier we used to give two effects. One was minus from stock the other was minus from PNL account but here we are making only PNL statement. So single effect will be given minus from change in inventories. Okay, particularly this unrealized profit, you subtract it in which note? You'll minus it in this note in PNL statement. Which one? This. 
change in inventories. Here you will minus unrealized profit. Okay. So single effect will only be given for unrealized profit in profit and loss statement. What single effect will be given? Minus from change in inventories. That is the third item of PNL statement. First is cost of material consumed. Second is purchase of stock in trade. Third is change in inventories. In the third item, change in inventories, you'll minus unrealized profit. Now the last point you remember for the whole part of this profit and loss statement is only one adjustment is possible in this chapter that is intercompany adjustment. So how is intercompany adjustments to effects to be given over here? Earlier we used to do minus from asset and minus from liability. Here you will minus from respective expense and you will minus from respective income. I repeat. You'll minus from respective expense and you'll minus from respective income. Okay. When we solve the questions, you'll understand it in detail. But intercompany adjustments to effects will be minus from expense and minus from income. So this would cover your entire part of PL statement. Whatever we have written in the notebook in the summary, this is the entire part of PL statement, what can be done in maximum questions. Uh, we'll practice one question today so that you understand this concept of PNL statement as well as the workings. So all of you take out the first question of PNL statement, what we will solve today. Yes, be attentive. Look at question number one. The following are the summarized profit and loss account of H limited and S limited for the year ended 31319. Now point to be noted. They have given you the profit and loss account in debit and credit format, debit side expenses, credit side incomes. But we have to make it in the vertical format what we studied right now. Mostly they may also give you the statement of PNL in vertical format, but in the college examples in the current year, they have given the PNL account in debit and credit format, horizontal format. But when we make the solution, we have to make it in vertical format. So let us first do the markings which item of PNL account will come under which heading in our PNL statement. This administrative expenses will come in other expenses. Okay, see we have written over here in the format administrative expenses would be a part of the other expenses. Here we have written in other expenses you have administration as well as selling and miscellaneous. So in our solution administrative expenses will be a part of other expenses. Same way selling expenses will also come in other expenses. Provision for tax, there is no note to be done. It will done, it'll be coming at the end. In PL statement at the end from profit before tax, you minus provision for tax, and then you get profit after tax. Okay, from profit before tax, you minus provision for tax, and then you get profit after tax. Net profit carried down, ignore it, we'll be finding it of our own. And then this is the PL appropriation account. Okay, in the question, the second part is PL appropriation account which we have to consider in the second part of PNL statement. We find that profits to be transferred to consolidated balance sheet. In that part, we'll consider this information. So preference dividend of subsidiary companies, 10,000 holding companies amount is not given. Okay, that will write in the second part. Which part? This part, what I made you write just now at the end. This second part is comparable with that PNL appropriation account. Okay, so all that preference dividend items, equity dividend items, all that will come in the second part of PNL statement. So also you can see this proposed equity dividend that will also come in that part. Net profit brought down is this 2 lakh 19,000 and 2 lakh 32,000 itself taken on the opposite side. Gross profit will be included in revenue from operations. I told you revenue from operation will either include sales or gross profit if gross profit is directly given. Okay, here gross profit is directly given so it will include gross profit commission will come in other incomes okay two incomes are to be written revenue from operation and other income so commission will come in other incomes additional information share capital of s limited consists of 80000 equity shares of rupees 10 each and 2005% preference shares of rupees 100 each out of which h limited acquired 80% of issued equity share capital. So this will get us degree of control. Of S limited on 1st October 2018 will get us time ratio. That is the date of acquisition. Now selling expenses of S limited include 19,000 paid to H limited as commission. 
So this is intercompany adjustment. Okay, this is what we call it as intercompany adjustment. What did I tell you regarding intercompany adjustment? I told you that you minus from expense and minus from income. Here we will minus from which expense and which income? We'll minus from selling expense and from which income? Commission. So all of you put tick on selling expense and put tick on commission. When we record selling expense and commission, from selling expense we will minus 19,000 of commission and from commission also we will minus 19,000 of commission. Because one company has paid commission to another company, so same commission is included in one company's selling expense and another company's commission. Now we do the consolidation. So you cannot say that you are incurring expense on yourself or you cannot say that you are earning income from yourself. So this after the marriage, the amount will get subtracted from expenses as well as incomes. Prepare consolidated profit and loss account for the year ended 31st March 2019. Ignore dividend distribution tax. So first we make those five set of workings what we studied just now today. Okay. First working I told you, first two workings are going to remain same. So first one is degree of control. That working we will make exactly same manner as we have been doing earlier. Two columns, H limited and minority interest. Now first we write the number of shares of S limited. Here you all can see in adjustment one, 80,000 equity shares are there in S limited. So all of you write down 80,000 equity shares of S limited. Okay, 80,000 equity shares of S limited. Now holding company has acquired how many shares from that? 80%. So 80,000's 80% holding company has acquired 64,000 shares and 80,000 minus 64,000, 16,000 are with minority interest. If you cancel the zeros, then both are divisible by 4. 64 divided by, both are divisible by 16. 64 divided by 16 is 4, 16 divided by 16 is 1. So 4 is to 1, 4 by 5 and 1 by 5 is the ratio of degree of country. Now here I told you today that if holding company has acquired preference shares also, then separate degree of control will be obtained for preference shares. But in our question right now, Holding company has not acquired any preference shares. Okay, you all can see adjustment to H limited acquired 80% of issued equity share capital of S limited. There is no mention that holding company has acquired preference shares also. So that working will not come. Okay, in case if holding company acquires preference shares also, exactly same way we will write that there are 2000 preference shares of S limited. Holding company has acquired how many shares, minorities have how many shares and the degree of control. For equity shares, you will obtain the degree of control separately. For preference shares, you will obtain the degree of control separately. Now, second working what we have to do is for time ratio. Three dates are to be written in the time ratio. So first date is the beginning of the year 1418. Then the date of acquisition you all can see in second adjustment is 1st October 2018. And then year ending that is 31st March 2019. So pre-acquisition period April to September is of 6 months and post-acquisition period October to March is again of 6 months. 1 is to 1 is the ratio of degree of control, sorry time ratio 1 by 2 and 1 by 2. So these two workings we have been doing earlier also exactly same. Now the new workings come. First we find minority interest. Now how do we find minority interest? What workings we have done? You can refer to them. Okay, just now only we have done them. First we start with opening balance of profit and loss account. Everything of subsidiary company, keep it in mind. Opening profit and loss accounts balance of S limited. Okay, all figures we have to take off S limited only. Now see in the entire question, are you given with any opening balance? If at all it was given, it would have been given in this part. Buy balance brought down. Third part, PNL appropriation account. 
but no such amounts are given means there is no amount of opening balance given to you nil so the opening balance of pnl account of s limited is nil in that we have to add current years profit after tax okay in that we have to add current years profit after tax now what is current years profit after tax of s limited see in this second part holding and subsidiary company what is this net profit net profit is profit after tax 232000 can you all see here in pnl statement what is profit after tax of subsidiary company we have to take only subsidiary companies amount in the workings 232000 then i told you from that you'll minus preference dividend as well as equity dividend because we show them separately in the second part of pnl statement so minus preference dividend see what is preference dividend of s limited all of you can see here 10000 is preference dividend of s limited that we will minus and then we will also minus equity dividend because that also we show separately in the pnl statement so equity dividend all of you see in the debit side of this account what is equity dividend amount of s limited all of you can see 80000 so that also we will minus 80000 Now, two lakh thirty-two thousand minus ten thousand minus eighty thousand, so two lakh thirty-two thousand minus ninety thousand, that comes to one lakh forty-two thousand. Now, in this one lakh forty-two thousand, we further multiplied with minorities' share to get minority interest. So, what is minorities' share given at the top in degree of control? Minorities' share is one by five. Okay, four is to one is the ratio of degree of control. What is minority share in that one by five? So into one by five. Or if we do one lakh forty-two thousand into one by five, so what is minority interest? Twenty-eight thousand four hundred. Okay, twenty-eight thousand four hundred is minority interest. So this working is to be done in all the questions to find minority interest. after minority interest next working we have to do for capital reserve okay next working we have to do for capital reserve so working note 4 will be for capital reserve now how do we find the amount of capital reserve we studied just now how to make the workings to find capital reserve first you start with opening balance of profit and loss account of s limited okay opening profit and loss account balance of s limited Which we know is nil. Okay, opening balance of PNL statement is not given. Two columns we are making amounts here, so opening balance is nil. Okay, as we have seen here, if it was given, it was given here. It would have been given here, but it is not given, so nil. Then we have to add current years profit after tax. now this we write in the inner column okay whatever is current years profit after tax we write it in the inner column what is current years profit after tax of as limited 2 lakh 32000 just now in minority interest also we took it but you take it in inner column over here 2 lakh 32000 now here we will minus only preference dividend because we have to find capital profits from equity shareholders point of view so here you will minus only preference dividend i repeat because we have to find profits from equity shareholders point of view we will minus this preference dividend of 10000 okay s limited preference dividend 10000 we will minus so what are the profits available for equity shareholders 222000 that we multiply with pre acquisition period what is pre acquisition period in the time ratio One is to one is the time ratio. So what is pre-acquisition period? Half is pre-acquisition period. Six months out of twelve months. So we multiply it with half. Two lakh twenty-two thousand into half. One lakh eleven thousand are the capital profits. Total profit of whole year is two lakh twenty-two thousand. Pre-acquisition period's profit in that will be half of it. That is eleven lakh eleven thousand. Now no opening balances there means we can say one lakh eleven thousand itself are the capital profits. 
that we will further multiply with holding company's share to get capital reserve. So in the ratio of degree of control, what is holding company's share? 4 by 5. So further you will multiply it with 4 by 5 to get capital reserves amount. 1,11,000 into 4 divided by 5. That comes to 88,800. That is the amount of capital reserve. Now why this is capital reserve? Further I told you in the statement we do add holding company's share in pre-acquisition preference dividend but then holding company has not acquired any preference dividend here so that portion will not come okay what we have written in the workings in the summary is that we will further add holding company's share in pre-acquisition preference dividend but that we have to write only if holding company acquires preference shares in the current question Holding company has acquired only equity shares. They have not acquired preference shares. So nothing further to be added in capital reserve. If holding company acquires preference shares also, then we will further add capital reserve also. Now all of you pause the video and make this entire format of consolidated PL statement of holding and subsidiary company. Entire means including all that items which I made you write in second part also. Okay, so you all will be writing till that complete portion. Which portion? Revenue from operation, other incomes, total incomes, in expenses, CD, EF, do, then total profits before tax, provision for tax, profit after tax. Then you also write that profits to be transferred to consolidated balance sheet. Opening balance of PL statement, profit after tax, preference dividend, everything you all noted. Okay. So pause the video and note down this all items what I made you write in the PL statement today. I hope all of you would have done the formats of profit and loss statement entirely what we studied including that second part extra also. Now first we make the notes. First note we will make for revenue from operation. Okay, first note will be for revenue from operation. Now revenue from operation here as I said to you includes gross profit we have don't have any other information. So gross profit of H limited all of you see here what is the gross profit of H limited 6 lakhs and S limited 7 lakh 50 thousand. So as we used to do in the consolidated balance sheet same way we have to make the notes here H limited 6 lakhs S limited 7 lakh 50 thousand. Outer column thirteen lakh fifty thousand, and final total also thirteen lakh fifty thousand. Then second note we will make for other incomes. Now what do we have in other incomes? Commission is there in other incomes? Okay, first we'll write commission of H Limited. Then we'll write commission of S limited. And then here we have intercompany adjustment also. You all can see here commission we have put take 19,000 we have put take S limited doesn't have any amount only. As per adjustment 3 what do we have to minus in intercompany adjustment entire 19,000. So from that we'll subtract intercompany adjustment. Okay. Further we will minus intercompany adjustment. So commission or of on H limited 19,000, S limited no amount is there and we do minus intercompany adjustment that is 19,000. So outer column we will get nil and then final total also we will get nil. Then after commission in expenses C, D, E, F, do. So C stands for cost of materials consumed we don't have. Okay debit side you can see only other expenses are there. So cost of materials consumed we don't have, direct purchases of stock in trade we don't have, again change in inventories we don't have, then C, D, E, employees benefit we don't have, F, finance cost we don't have, D, depreciation and amortization we don't have, directly we have other expenses. So last note will be straight away of other expenses. In that other expenses first we have administrative expenses. 
administrative expenses will write off H limited and S limited and then the total amount. So what are the administrative expenses? 2,30,000 of H limited, 3 lakhs of S limited, so 5,30,000. All of it on H limited, 2,30,000. S limited, 3 lakhs. Outer column, 5,30,000. Then we have selling expenses. Now in selling expenses, we have put take because we have to minus that intercompany adjustment of commission. So here H limited, S limited, and then we will subtract intercompany adjustment of commission. Okay, 19,000 is what we are doing. Subtract as intercompany adjustment over here. So first we record the amount of selling expenses. H limited's amount of selling expenses is 90,000. S limited is 1,28,000. And from adjustment three, intercompany adjustment is 19,000. Okay, so 90,000 of H limited. 1,28,000 of S limited. And then minus intercompany adjustment of 19,000. So in outer column we'll get 90,000 plus 1,28,000 minus 19,000. What we'll get in the outer column is 1,99,000. And then total amount of administrative expenses, what we get is 5,30,000 plus 1,99,000. That comes to 7,29,000. That's it. We don't have any other notes over here. So now we can fill up this profit and loss statement. Okay. Now we can fill up this profit and loss statement. Revenue from operations from note 1, what do we get? 13,50,000. Okay, from note 1, we get 13,50,000. Then other incomes from note 2, what do we get? Nil, because intercompany adjustment is subtracted. So other incomes become nil in note number 2. Finally, total incomes are 13,50,000. Now, all this you can directly record in outer column. And then final total expenses will also be 7,29,000. Now, profit before tax 3 minus 4. So 13,50,000 minus 7,29,000. The profit before tax would come to 13,50,000 minus 7,29,000. That comes to 6,21,000. Profits before tax are 6,21,000. From that, we have to subtract provision for tax. Now, see here, S limited is 80,000, S limited is 90,000. So total provision for tax will subtract 1,70,000. Okay. 80,000 of H limited, 90,000 of S limited means what is the total provision for tax to subtract for both the companies? 1,70,000. If you minus that, then what is the profit after tax? We get 6,21,000 minus 1,70,000. We get 4,51,000. Now, how do you find the profits to be transferred to consolidated balance sheet? Opening balance of PL account is not given in the question. We have already seen that. Okay. You all can see here, I told you, if at all opening balance is given, it would be given in the third part, but it is not given. In that, now what do we have to add? Profits after tax. So, what are the profits after tax of current year? Same amount. 4,51,000 is what you'll take here. These are profits after tax. 4,51,000. Same amount we'll take over here. Okay. Now, after that, preference dividend. Now, what are the preference dividends? H limited, no amount is there. S limited, 10,000 is there. So, all of it on H limited is nil. Okay, preference dividend of H limited is nil. S limited is 10,000. And holding company has again not acquired any shares. Okay, holding company has not acquired any shares. So, H limited, in preference shares, they have not acquired. 
So H limited share in preference dividend of S limited is also nil. Outer column you will get 10,000. Then equity dividend you all can see here is 1 lakh of H limited and 80,000 of S limited. Okay, 1 lakh of H limited and 80,000 of S limited. So look at it on 1 lakh, then 80,000. Now, here H limited has acquired equity shares. What is the H limited share in degree of control of equity shares? 4 by 5. So what will be H limited share in this equity dividend of S limited? It will be 80,000 into 4 by 5. Okay. It will be 80,000 into 4 by 5. So what does that come to 80,000 into 4 by 5? That comes to 64,000. That we will minus over here. Holding company's share in the equity dividend we will minus. That we calculate as 64,000. How do you get that? 80,000 into 4 by 5 that is 64,000. Again, okay. I repeat once again. How do you get this 64,000? 80,000. This 80,000 into 4 by 5. Holding company's share in degree of control. That is how we get the 64,000. Now 1 lakh plus 80,000, 1 lakh 80,000 minus 64,000 will be 1 lakh 16,000. This is all we have to minus, so write it in bracket. These all amounts we have to minus, so write them in bracket. 10,000 also we have to minus. 1 lakh 16,000 also we have to minus. Now minority interest, what do we get in working note? Three all of the check it here. 28,400. So directly we will record 28,400 from working note 3. That also we have to minus, so write in bracket. And then capital reserve, what do we get in working note for? 88,800. That also we have to straight away minus. So all of we write it in bracket, 88,800. And then subtracting all these amounts, what is the final amount that will go to consolidated balance sheet we have to find over here. So do in calculator everyone, 4,51,000 minus 10,000 minus 1,16,000 minus 28,400 minus 88,800 so that comes to 2,7800 okay 2,7800 is the final amount that will go to consolidated balance sheet so this is how we have to make the PL statement compared to balance sheet it is easier because these are the only concepts in the PL statement so once you master the summary, what I made you write, PNL statements format and the five set of workings, nothing extra, no new point is possible. Like in you know, balance sheet, we have revaluation of assets workings, unrealized profits, complicated workings. Here, so many complications are not possible. This simple four workings are to be done, and this small PNL statement and very limited notes are there in holding company notes. Balance sheet notes are also many in number. So. And this too may come in full option of 15 marks in your final exams. 15 marks consolidated balance sheet in option 15 marks PL statement. So if you master this limited workings and PL statement format, then here also you can score full marks in your exams. More practice on this we will do in the next lecture and then we will wind up with this chapter. That'll be all for today. Bye everyone. Take care. See you in the next lecture.